Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example of an integral is the integral of dx over a plus bx squared. And of course, we can't use the natural logarithm trick because we have an x squared in the denominator and we do not have an x in the numerator. So how do we deal with that? Well, it turns out that trick substitution here works quite well. So let's draw a triangle. And the bottom side here, we're going to call that the square root of a. The vertical side here, we're going to call the square root of bx squared, which makes it the square root of b times x. And then the, hyp the hypotenuse then will simply be the square root of the sum of the squares, which would be a plus bx squared. Now, using that relationship, let's call this angle here theta. And then we can see that the tangent of theta, by definition, is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So that would be the square root of bx over the square root of a, which means that x can be written as the square root of a over b times the tangent of theta. And of course, since we have a dx in the numerator, we're going to take the derivative of both sides or the differential of both sides. So we can say that dx is equal to the square root of a over b times the secant square of theta d theta or we can write it as dx is equal to the square root of a over b times 1 over the cosine square of theta d theta, depending upon which form will help us integrate this better. Let's see here, so now we have a dx, and then a plus bx squared, that's the hypotenuse. We can then say that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side, the square root of a, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the square root of a plus bx squared. And then notice that if we square both sides, we can then solve for a plus bx squared. So we can say that a plus bx squared is equal to a divided by the cosine square of theta. So now we can go ahead and make those substitutions and see what we get. So this is equal to the integral of, instead of dx, we're going to write, well, we can put the square root of a over b already outside the integral sign, and then we can have 1 over the cosine square of theta d theta in the numerator divided by a plus bx squared, which is a over the cosine square of theta. So a divided by the cosine square of theta. Now you can see that this becomes a very easy integral because we have 1 over the cosine square of theta and 1 over the cosine square of theta, so these cancel out. Now we have 1 over a, which can go outside the integral sign, so this becomes 1 over a times the square root of a over b times the integral of d theta, and of course that's a really easy integral to integrate. We can simplify this as well, so this becomes 1 over the square root of a times b, and here we have the integral d theta, which is theta, plus a constant of integration. So now we have to substitute back for theta, so we go back over here, and we can say that the tangent of theta, well, we already have it here, so let's, uh, we don't need to repeat that. So now we can solve for the theta, so theta is equal to the arctangent of the square root of b over a times x, like that. And that can go in here, so this now becomes 1 over the square root of a b times theta, which is the arctangent of the square root of b over a times x, plus a constant of integration, and there you have it. That's how we integrate dx over a plus bx squared.